Well, it seems like mainstream media is finally on board. Well, well, here we are. It took them five months to get on board, but now mainstream media is saying, let, let's read this. A recession in 2023 is now inevitable. Layoffs in tax and finance will spread to other seconds. Say it ain't so. <laughs> what? Are you telling me it's just not going to be layoffs in the tech and finance arena in, the, in those industries? What? Who would have ever thought that? <laughs> Listen guys, if you've been watching my videos, and I know most of you guys are, I've been telling you guys this for months and months and months. I've been telling you guys, if you guys think, if you think that this is just going to stay in, in tech land, and this is just going to happen to bankers, and you think that this layoffs, all of these layoffs that I've been covering, been telling you guys about housing markets going down, and that the recession that's going to come, that we're already in, <laughs> that I've been saying over and over and over, and you think that it's not going to spread to everyone that Walmart, Amazon, gas stations, you name it, isn't going to start laying off people, you are madly mistaken. And now, now, all of a sudden, <laughs> these guys are coming on board saying, yeah, guys, uh, I know I know, hindsight's 2020, but now that we look at the data and we see that the Fed is going to continue raising rates, now that we've seen, you know, hundreds of thousands of people lose their jobs in tech, now that we've seen banks getting taken over and, and, and being bailed out, yeah, now, now, now we're going to say, yeah, we're probably going to hit a recession. <laughs> See how much stuff it took for everything to happen and to look back. You just think they're thinking to themselves, yep, bank collapse, a check mark, yep, people losing their jobs, check mark, yeah, housing bubble, yeah, check mark, yeah, inflation, super high, check mark, yeah, we're probably gonna hit a recession. <laughs> Yeah, we're probably gonna hit a recession. Yeah, people are gonna probably lose jobs in that recession too. Yeah, I I'm sorry guys. Yeah, I, yeah, I made a mistake. Uh, yeah, I thought houses were gonna keep going 30, 40%. Now you see YouTubers talking about, yeah, I thought we were gonna be okay and I thought houses were gonna continue to climb up. Oh, that low inventory? I thought we were gonna never go into a recession with, you know, inventory and all this. Prices were never gonna drop on houses because of inventory. Now that we're seeing prices drop on homes, now that people are losing their jobs, now those same YouTubers are saying, yeah, we're gonna hit a recession now. <laughs> <laughs> but let's jump into it. My name is Orlando. Welcome to the channel, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel, guys. But let's jump into it. It says, we are witnessing the beginning of increasing unemployment in the financial sector and high tech, which have benefited from the easy money policy since the Great Recession of 2028. Now, see guys, I've been telling you guys that with all the printing of the money that happened during the pandemic, the cheap money that was available, and we've seen this thing happen with a correlation of cheap money and things going up. So I never understood why people thought that if you increase the cost of money, things would not come down. I have been saying that over and over and over. If you increase the cost of people borrowing money, things tend to go down, right? Things will go down because they went up when cheap money was available. If you make the money more expensive, prices will go down. And that's just, uh, I don't know, it seemed like common sense, but everybody was telling me that I was wrong, saying, oh no, Orlando, everything's gonna be offset by supply. Supply, supply, supply. And I was just like, ah, uh, well, supply doesn't really matter when no one wants to go buy that thing anymore, right? Which would be housing. The same thing applies to businesses and barring any type of money that you would need to run your business. If money is cheap, you will benefit from that. And there has to be a 
pro and con to that. The con is what we're in right now. The inflation went through the roof and you cannot, we've done this. This is the test. And unfortunately, we have failed this test multiple times. We have seen the same test being applied in 2008. Yes, some of the questions were different on the test, but in, you know, 98% of the test was still the same. And we still failed it again, guys. And that is if you provide cheap money and a lot of it, inflation tends to go up. Who would have thought that? <laughs> Recently, Goldman Sachs, a bellwether of Wall Street profitability and employment, announced layoffs of around 4,000 employees and cut bonuses. If Goldman's announcement is a forerunner of the 2023 Wall Street downsizing, then higher employment is unfolding in the canyons of lower Manhattan. Now, basically what they're saying is, is like, if Wall Street is cutting prices, then that basically means that it's just a matter of time before it reaches quote unquote Main Street. We have Wall Street and then Main Street. They're saying that if it happened in Wall Street, then it's going to have a ripple effect on Main Street. And I have been saying that over and over and over again. <laughs> I've been saying the same thing. Hey guys, listen. If you think this is just gonna happen here, it's gonna happen over here too. It's gonna be a contagion for the rest of the country. And now we're starting to see that. It says Facebook parent Meta and Amazon recently announced another major downsizing to their workforce and layoffs accelerated in the next few months, a recession, a readjustment, the end of easy money policies over the past few years will be underway. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Guys, listen, this is the biggest portion. A lot of these companies thought that the Fed was going to pivot. They thought to themselves, let's please, please pivot, pivot, Fed, pivot. And when the Fed decided not to pivot, as he shouldn't because he has to fight inflation, a lot of these companies thought to themselves, oh no, oh no. It's going to cost more money to borrow and to run our businesses now that the rate is continuing to go up. He is really on the trend of continuing to fight inflation, even though he should have went higher. The point that a lot of these companies received was that he's going to continue to go in the direction of continuing to raise rates. And that's not what they want. So what do they have to do? They understand that demand is eventually gonna go down for their products and it's gonna cost them more money to borrow money to run their business. They're gonna get hit on both ends. No income coming in and costing more to run their business. So what is the number one thing that they're going to do? <laughs> You're fired, get out. They're going to start cutting employees. I have told you guys this over and over again that these companies will do the one thing that they can do very easily to cut costs and that's get rid of you. They will do that 100% of the time. That is the number one thing they will do first before trying to come up with a new product, trying to figure out how to cut costs in that product. The number one thing is getting rid of you. And that's what's going to start to happen now that these companies realize what's gonna happen. The job market may seem strong, but overall long-term chart of unemployment rate, the chart above, which we see right here, you know, going up, up, down, and then right here at 2020, it shot up dramatically because of the pandemic and then came down. Layoffs tend to begin early in the recession phase of the business cycle, then accelerate markedly as companies realize they must cut expenses to deal with the new economic reality of tight money and slowing demand. That's what I was talking about, guys. That's exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. These guys will drop you like a hot potato. <laughs> they will figure out a way to hire new people when they get rid of you, when they decide that they have to do these layoffs and they're going to, they're having meetings right now, guys. As we speak, companies are having meetings right now thinking to themselves, how can we Cut costs, someone raise her hand. Get rid of employees. That's what they're doing right now. And then they will figure out what they can do with products and cutting R&D and all that other stuff. When unemployment rates reach a trough as the economic peaks, it tends to stabilize at the lowest level of the cycle. Then it's off to the races. Meaning, this is just the beginning, guys. I know you guys have seen my videos when I'm talking about Facebook, Meta, Microsoft, all these other guys, Disney, and you think to yourself, Orlando, Netflix, 
th this is just tech, tech people getting fired, Orlando. What are you talking about, Orlando? It's just tech. They, they're not firing at in hospitality. They're not firing restaurant workers. They're not firing, you know, everyday people. They're firing these high tech jobs, right? That's what you're thinking to yourself. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you to prepare. It's not gonna be in this hub of tech and banking and finances. It's That's just not it. It's gonna spread all over. Just think about it, guys. Just think about it. If it's affecting finance and banks, then you know that the credit crunch is coming right after that. And as the credit crunch happens, who is borrowing money? Businesses, restaurants, hotels, all of these guys, mom and pop shops, they're going to find liquidity by borrowing from these banks. And what are the banks going to say? Oh, no. Sorry, we're not lending money on, on hotels right now. Oh, we're not lending any business money to restaurants right now. So where are these guys going to get the money from? Oh, let me guess. Credit cards that are 26%? That puts them more in debt? But what happens if there also is no demand, but they still have to pay the credit card debt? Doesn't that put them in a disadvantaged position where they're now paying more money in debt and basically little income is coming in? because the prices of things are super high now and the regular everyday person can't afford to go out to a restaurant anymore? Sounds like a big bubble is about to burst. When unemployment reaches politically intolerable levels, that's when the Fed pivots and begins to lower Fed fund rates. Another easy money boom is ignited. Now, that's just showing you what the cycle is. That's just showing you that we're at the point now, we're at the very beginning of that needle hitting that bubble and popping. <laughs> And that the Fed isn't going to make that pivot that everybody is trying to tell you that is going to happen. I mean, I've seen so many hedge fund managers. I've seen so many bankers saying, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to pivot. <laughs> I've heard them say, oh, we're gonna, they're going to pivot. They have to pivot. And then when they don't pivot, they're very optimistic that he's still going to pivot on the next one. It just moves on to the next meeting. The next meeting in May, they're gonna still say, the story's gonna come out, mark my words, the story's gonna come out, he's gonna pivot. He's gonna cut rates. Because eventually, eventually they will get it right, but it won't happen until we have this flood of layoffs, flood of demand that has stopped. Right now, people are spending out of their minds. I got my money. They're using so much credit card debt to buy things that they need because wages haven't grown that eventually that bubble's gonna pop too. I don't know if you guys have heard, but people now, when it comes to their, uh, their auto loans, they owe more on their auto loans than the car is worth. And I'm not talking your normal one to 2,000. I'm talking about tens, $20,000. Cause they bought at the height when used cars were super high, when new cars were super high. And they would purchase them at a ridiculous rate and putting no money down, no liquidity. And as I'm making this video, I'm getting right now alerts. Right now I'm getting alerts. Let's take a look at it. Microsoft announces 2,743 layoffs for employees at East King County. Now these are additional. These are additional guys. Let's take a look at another one. Walmart to lay off up to 400 Central Florida distribution facility workers. Now I know what you guys are saying. Oh, it's Orlando, it's only 400 facility workers. Those 400 facility workers are really going to fill it, guys. The point isn't the, the number. The number isn't important. The p important part is you can see it's starting to spread. It's starting to move over, move over, move over. Next thing you know, we will hear about layoffs in big numbers on a daily basis until we get to that unemployment number that the Fed is saying, okay, now we can do a, a, a reversal on, we could do that pivot that everybody wants. But only then is when you will see the pivot. And this is the reason why I'm telling you guys to really pay attention to stuff like this and you're trying to buy a home that is overpriced Remember, do not overpay. We say that on this channel all the time, but if your job is on the line and you're trying to buy an overpriced home and prices haven't dropped in your area, what are you really putting yourself at risk for? To buy an overpriced home and lose your job during a, uh, a recession that is definitely gonna hit, that, uh, that is 
in my opinion, already here, you understand what I'm saying here. Prices are coming down on these homes, guys, but you have to pay attention to what's happening in your market, guys. You have to pay attention to what's happening in the news and how it can affect you on your everyday life. Having a job is an everyday life thing. And I don't want you to be put into a position to where you buy a home, but you lose your job and you can't pay the mortgage anyway. So make sure you look at things like this to understand what's happening in your housing market, understand what's happening with your job stability. As always guys, you won't get all of your information off of this one video. So make sure you watch this video here. It will help you understand what's going on with the housing market, financial news, and get into your first rental property. I promise you the information you receive from these videos will be gold. See you on the next one. Thanks.